Hi guys, my name is Michelle and welcome to my next video. If you've never met me before, I'm so sorry that we're meeting under these circumstances, but there are some things that need to be said. So I have been wanting for a really long time to make more videos about medical school. Obviously, I'm a third year medical student, that's a huge part of my life. But I just can't do it. I've just got absolutely no motivation to sit in front of a camera and tell people how I study or how I got into med school or how great my placements are and I'm quite frankly fed up of making vlogs of me crying and me coming out of placements and being like I hated it um, to not sit down and film this video about how everything's going wrong and why I am considering not being a doctor anymore Tell me again, just tell me again and I To consider myself quite a positive person and I feel really bad that I'm just moaning to my friends 24 7 so I thought maybe if I come on here and I get this all off my chest maybe we can move on from here but more importantly I watch a lot of med school vloggers and I don't really see anyone talking about this so I would love if you have a similar experience to leave it down below in the comments and we can start a conversation um maybe like feel less alone and maybe come up with some possible solutions as well so yeah if you did like this video don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe and like i said st let's start a discussion in the comments because i don't want to feel alone anymore so like i said i'm a third year so in the university that i go to years one and two are pre-clinical and then third year is when you start doing your clinical placements I am not a very academic person so I've been very excited for my clinical years and doing my clinical placements. Meeting patients, forming relationships, taking histories, practicing my clinical skills, they're all things I've been very excited for but this year has not been like I was expecting. <sighs> so firstly, before I even get into Covid, let's talk about normal clinical year crap. So I feel like just as I learned how to study in the preclinical years and I was finally getting my act together, I was finally not going to fail the year, that all changed, like coming to clinical years and suddenly <sighs> most of my time is supposed to be on placement, whether or not that actually happens we'll come to in a minute, most of my time is supposed to be on placement. When I'm not in placement, I'm in seminars. When I'm not in seminars, I'm in CBL. When I'm not in CBL, I have loads of things I need to sort out from PDT meetings, appraisals, longitudinal patients, extra sessions because now is the time to start enhancing my portfolio. And it's just a lot, it's just a lot. And that is all pre-COVID. So on a serious note, like if anyone actually knows how to study clinical medicine, please, please, please let me know. I've literally been scouring the internet trying to find out. And everyone's just like, oh no, don't take notes, don't take notes, just learn. <sighs> How am I supposed to learn when I don't have any placements? <sighs> so moving on to placements, um, because of COVID, a lot of placements have been cancelled. Or even if they're not cancelled because of COVID reasons, due to social distancing, we can't be on placement as much. Because of social distancing, it means that there can only be like two students on ward at a time. And obviously my one teaching hospital in my area has third years, fourth years and fifth years that they need to accommodate for in all the wards across the hospitals. So last year's third years used to be in in the hospital on placement every single day of the week for the majority of the time. If they had any downtime as well, they were free to just go to whatever ward they wanted because social distancing was not a problem and learning was a priority. But this year we have strict schedules, maybe like, probably, if I'm talking optimistically, it would be three times a week, like either morning or afternoon, so like three hours for three times a week, so that's like nine hours a week. But yeah, again, that's talking optimistically because some placements do get cancelled, especially now with, with the second wave and... Um, Obviously, unfortunately, so many ICU beds are needed, staff are being redeployed, there's so many problems that come with that. So I was meant to be going on a placement on Monday and I was told that there are actually no patients there for me to see because they're all adult COVID patients. Obviously, for the sake of our safety, we are trying to limit our contact with COVID patients, as well as the fact that, that I just wouldn't have gotten anything out of going onto that ward anyway. Um, and then also in terms of teaching, I honestly know that doctors try their best and I just truly wish I was on third year, 
like at a different point in time because I feel like I absolutely would have loved it and all of the people in the higher years say like oh third year's the best year, third year's my favourite year and that is not that's not a good thing to hear when I'm literally like going through hell and they're like oh it all goes downhill from here so yeah I, I think the doctors obviously have the best intentions in mind but there's a lot of staff shortages so whether that's staffing off because of normal sickness or self-isolation or covid or there's also a lot of staff working from home if possible because they're vulnerable so that has a knock-on effect that means that the staff that are left have a bigger workload and that has a knock-on effect for the students meaning that staff don't have much time to teach so the teaching that i have got has been so valuable and that kind of makes it a bit more frustrating because it means that to the point where i've done exam questions where a consultant has said that exact thing to me and they've told me the answer that's how i know that clinical teaching is so valuable and it's so informative and i i believe those youtube videos that say don't take notes in third year don't take notes on clinical placements like you just need to dive in there and pay attention and you learn so much i believe that but what am i supposed to do now when there's no placements and there's no teaching my point is is that clinical teaching is so relevant and that is how we're assessed at the end of the day like we've got less clinical teaching but the same clinical assessments asking us the same questions as they would have done last year when or the year before when we would have had a whole year of clinical teaching and i'm just really worried about that deficit and how to catch up on that work when i'm not seeing the patients and i'm not getting the teaching so we just briefly touched about um how covid has impacted placement so let's talk about how covid has impacted learning specifically online lectures and seminars I hate online learning I literally hate it so much like ever since September I don't know if I'm the only one in the world that's literally what it feels like it feels like everyone else is getting along fine with it but I'm just super struggling like I have the best intentions I start at my desk I pull the lecture up I have a piece of paper next to me to take notes and I somehow end up if I'm in my bed I end up in my bed every time and I don't know how <laughs> Um, but they're just not engaging like I don't know about your guys' unis but at mine most people just turn their cameras off and microphones off and it's just one person lecturing the whole time um, and I do feel really bad for the clinicians teaching us like they are trying their best but I think in these times it takes a lot more than just their last year's lecture slides to be as effective this year and um, there's definitely a lack of discussion and like I said that just means that it ends up so monotonous and boring that most of the time I end up in bed probably asleep because that is exactly the background noise that I like to send me asleep so yeah I mean maybe that is the student's fault and I'm the same I turn my camera off and my car um maybe it is our fault for not contributing but I don't know if you can blame us like when there's so much going on in the world and it's also hard like it's hard how my bedroom has become the place where I sleep, the place that I eat, the place that I try to study, the place that I try to do my online learning from, the place that I try to relax, the place that I try to do all of my social interaction because it's literally illegal to do anything else. So yeah this one tiny room has kind of become like a hellhole and I don't think that I should blame myself for not being able to concentrate in here. Um, no. So yeah, like I mentioned before, I just literally don't know how to study. Like, I think this room is one problem, definitely. Um, I, I think the library is open. The last time I heard it is open to book places. But then, you know, you've got the whole mask thing and you're not allowed to be with your friends and... I don't know if that would feel much different to me than actually being in my room but um obviously like I know that doctors have to carry on and all that but I just feel like <laughs> the world is on fire the world is on fire oh my goodness and so many of us have been touched by sickness or worrying about family's health or mental health like the effects of covid just stretch so far beyond the actual what's it called the actual disease itself um is just unreal and i'm quite a warrior i don't know about you but i am 
a worrisome person. So it's very hard to be worrying about that 24 seven as like anyone would, I guess. And then to try and like quiet my brain when I'm not allowed to socialize, I'm not allowed to do anything outside this room to relax. How am I supposed to then quiet my brain enough to focus on something? And don't get me wrong, like I wish I could find my motivation again. I wish, I wish, I wish that I could be like how I used to be, like super passionate and super motivated and diving into work because I love it and I still do love it, I do. But it's just the concentration part that I really lack and that being able to like detach myself from reality I think has become so hard when everything around you constantly reminds you of how nothing's normal, you know. From me walking down the corridor today and the cleaner stepping out so that we don't cross paths, like little things like that. I just feel like I'm always reminded of how everything's changed and then the massive impact of that. I feel like we don't talk about it enough, obviously. People don't want to, but it's literally traumatic, like living through these times. And I just hate how everything, everything in the whole world, but like especially on the medicine course, has changed. Um, from placements to online seminars to obviously how we're being assessed. So at my university, we have an online um, exams. And even that in itself, again, I'm going to come back to the room situation. Like I'm in this room when I'm sleeping, when I'm relaxing, when I'm eating. And now you want me to do an online exam here. Like I feel like, I feel like it's kind of like the Olympics. I have this theory about the Olympics. But because that's when people always do like their personal best, like world best, isn't it? And I feel like when you step into like the arena, you perform like a little bit better. Um, because of like the pressure and the encouragement and the support and... But mostly the pressure, let's be real. And I've always felt the same about exams. Like, obviously it can go both ways, but hopefully you want that extra bit of pressure and, and the support around you and the encouragement from your peers to, like, push you, like, a little bit beyond what you'd achieve in your room when you know that you can just go to sleep after this last question and stuff like that. And obviously, like, that's something that we're not getting. So my point is, everything has changed, but they're still expecting the same outcomes as us. And, um, yeah. That just seems a little bit unfair that, for example, like, so say, so say the pass mark was 58% last year. This year it would still be 58%, even though I haven't had the teaching, I haven't had the same quality online seminars, haven't had the same amount of placement time. Never mind that I haven't had any downtime to be even begin to focus on my revision and my studying. So it's literally just a mess. It's just such a huge mess. And it's amazing that everyone is just getting on with it and plodding along. Well, I feel like I'm a very self-aware person. <laughs> and I know that I'm not just, I'm just not getting on with it and plodding along. And that makes me feel like I'm falling behind. And then, I don't know. So then I guess I've kind of been reevaluating it and been like, well, am I falling behind or am I just doing what's best for me? Also, I just like a little bit of sympathy. I personally feel like these are my 20s. In, in medicine, I feel like time feels very sped up because your life is so like planned out for you. So in terms of med school, like first year, second year, third year is when you have your really long summers. Third year, do we even get really long summers? So for me, like first year, I was still 18. I was still a little bit, still a little bit young. But maybe second year and third year are probably the years when like, I would have like loved to have travelled a lot. Um, obviously everyone's different, but for me that's definitely my where my maturity was at and where my life goals were at was to travel. And now that that has been taken from me, I really feel like it's changed my priorities in life. And I'm not sure if this will get better. Maybe when restrictions are released and I can do a lot of travelling and kind of like eat my fill of the world literally because I love food. Maybe when that happens then that kind of like hole in me will be like filled and then I won't need that anymore but honestly like at the moment like I'm just I'm just considering kind of a career, career change because I don't want to stay in the one place where where I've been my whole life and like where I've never seen really anywhere else and again I'll come back to the fact that life as a med student and a doctor is very planned out for you like suddenly because of this pandemic that has started to feel super suffocating and I feel like I'd just go mad if that was my future and um the problem with medicine is that it seems like I don't have a choice and like that is my that is my future 
um, you know, you know what I'm talking about, like to graduate after fifth year and then do your two years of foundation training and then go into your speciality training for seven years and then become a consultant for the rest of your life. Like where is the time in there for me to do all the things that COVID has stolen from me firstly, like travel and relax with my friends. And again, like I just, I just don't understand how, how I'm supposed to go on with my life knowing that in Australia they're having Taylor Swift parties and I will be arrested if I go in to Tesco with another person. Like, <laughs> how did we get here? How did we get here? I'm actually dead. Like, again, I'll just come back to the fact that everything has changed. But it feels like, obviously, for good reason. But obviously, <laughs> the med school standards haven't. And I'm just, I'm just struggling. I'm just struggling with keeping up with the normal standards when everything else has changed. So I think that is actually everything that I wanted to say. Um, I actually feel a bit lighter, I do feel like I've gotten a lot of things off my chest and I am seriously hoping that people will interact with this video um, with your own stories and your own vents and rants. Um, we all need someone to talk to so your place can be in the comments below and I promise I will reply back to every single one of you. So I just wanted to finish this video by saying that this isn't the med school's fault. I actually think that my med school have done everything that they, that they can to... They're kind of in a difficult position because the goal of the med school is to graduate excellent clinicians. And they can't let a global pandemic stop that. Like, no one can. Like, the we can't put the public at a detriment like that. And... Um, so I'm in no way saying that this is a med school's fault. Like I said, I think they've been really good. So yeah, as I've mentioned like a few times, I do think that this is probably my fault. Like them, I don't know. Like the way that it looks like on YouTube is that every other med student in the world has got it figured out and they're just getting along with it, just putting mask on and getting on as normal. Um, so if you're one of those people, please leave your tips down below with how you cope because yeah, I guess I'm just not coping at the end of the day and that is why. I found it really hard to film any positive med school experiences, which I really want to, because if I was doing this last year, I'd never stop filming. Um, but yeah, I just thought maybe after this video, I'll be able to talk a little bit more positively when I've got kind of like both cards on the table. Everything I've mentioned in this video is just my own errors, and obviously they're only because of the current situation. Um, which I have no control over, the med school has no control over. So I don't think that anything can be changed, it is just a terrible situation. And I hope that you enjoyed my little rant about it. I did, I quite enjoyed it, I got I got a few things off my chest. So yeah, again, if you did like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And please, like, do talk to me in the comments, I'd absolutely love it. And hopefully I'll see you next time. Hopefully on a better note, a little bit more positive. Okay, bye. Tell me again just